Just before 11 o'clock on this Wednesday, welcome to Central Valley Talk Live. I'm Austin Reed here from the uh, Mike Briggs Studios at Central Valley Talk. We thank you for hanging out with us. We're going to be live and local until just after 3 o'clock today with a slew of great guests. Hit me up on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at Austin Reed on Air. Our first guest is an author. His name is Rob Samborn. He is uh, the proud author of the Prisoner of Paradise. I've got uh, his media kit, everything here. I've been kind of browsing through it this morning. Uh, Rob, good morning. Welcome to the show. Good morning, Austin. It's a pleasure to meet you. Thanks so much for having me. Thanks to Central Valley Talk. And also, I want to send a quick thank you to Stephanie Rebell from Book and, uh, Book and Wine Lovers Marketing as well. Yeah, shout How are out. You? Shout out to Stephanie. We love her here. So, um, okay, uh, The Prisoner of Paradise. Let's get into that in just a second. But first, I want to hear your story as an author. How long have you been in this field? Sure, absolutely. Thanks. So I've been writing this book for a number of years now, but I actually come from a screenwriting background. So I do live in Denver right now, which is why you can see that uh, big uh, tree behind me. But I used to live in a... It's not. In fact, it hasn't, it hasn't snowed yet, which is kind of crazy. Yeah, that is weird. Yeah, but I lived in LA for about 20 years. So okay. I'm very familiar with California, of course, obviously. And uh, I was a screenwriter there. And so this book originally was a script that actually was optioned by a production company founded by DreamWorks execs. And then when the option reverted back to me, I decided to convert it uh, into a book. I've always been really into writing in a lot of different forms, whether that is uh, screenplays for feature films or TV, as well as novels. And also I have a blog and all that. So my writing journey to answer your question really started when I was a kid. Hmm. Um, but you can say with this book, it probably started about five or six years ago. So there was um, a lot of stoppage time and you know, a lot of on and off uh, while I got my agent, while the agent got the publisher. And then also COVID, of course, <laughs> put a pretty long delay on it as well. But it's out now, out in the world, and I am thrilled. Yeah, so it was released on, what, November 30th, right? End of uh, last month. Yeah, correct. So just a week and a day ago. Um, I was looking at, at at some of the the praise. Man, you've got a lot of <laughs> a lot of very good. Uh, you know, I mean, this is just unbelievable. The 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 number of people that have, have read this book that that just love it. Yeah, it's um, got to make you feel good. It, it, it's it makes me feel incredible, and I feel extremely fortunate that the book has really resonated with a lot of different people. Um, you know, I'm very grateful for all of the advanced readers who did praise it ahead of time and give a review. And now that it's out, the reviews are coming in as well. Uh, it was also a finalist in the American Book Awards, which is great. And I, I think that one of the reasons why is, as I mentioned, is because it, it does actually resonate with a lot of different people. You know, it's a thriller blended with historical fiction and also a little fantasy. So most people, I like to think it's in a place in its own, but most often it's compared to like a Dan Brown, like Da Vinci Code meets uh, Diana Gabaldon's Outlander type of thing. So you have this thriller and intrigue and mystery aspect blended with a time spanning love story. Um, and it's also about Americans in Venice, Italy. Hmm. So because it has so many different aspects, I think a lot of people connect with something of the book, whether it's the characters or the story or the dilemmas that they go through, that type of thing. So I've been very fortunate to have excellent reviews. Tell me a little bit about the world's largest oil painting, the 400-year-old murder. I would love to, yeah. So the world's largest oil painting is called Paradise, and that's the paradise in The Prisoner of Paradise. And it was painted, it was completed in 1592 by Renaissance master Jacopo Tintoretto. Tintoretto. Um, and this painting still exists, it's a real thing, and it's in a place called the Doge's Palace, which is in Italian, uh, the Palazzo di Cale, in Venice. And that building itself, so Venice, by the way, started to sidetrack here, but Venice itself was a republic for a thousand years. The building itself is about a thousand years old, and this building, if you could imagine, is sort of a combination of the White House and Congress, and it's decorated with some of the most incredible works of art in the world. 
uh, on one particular wall in one particular room, which at one point was the largest room in all of Europe, is this painting. And it's enormous. I, I think it's probably about 40 or 50 feet wide by maybe 30 or 40 feet high. It's gigantic. And it depicts the coronation of Mary in heaven and has thousands and thousands and thousands of people in this painting. Uh, so the painting itself is a centerpiece of the book. I don't necessarily want to spoil it, but yeah. I think it's, I can probably give some away. Um, but it's a main, so one of the, uh, the main characters believes that his soul, he comes to believe, you could say, is that his true soulmate is not his wife, but a woman who is one of the figures in this painting and that her soul is actually trapped in this painting. What a and, story. Thanks. Wow. And so he goes on this quest to free her. He basically discovers a secret society that who over hundreds of years has developed a way to extract people's souls from their bodies. And they put them in this painting as a purgatory of sorts. And because they're soulmates, he can communicate with her and he goes on a quest to free her, but freeing her means freeing all of the souls and the secret society claims they're all evil and will do whatever they can to stop it. And so there's a myth there. So there's this 450 year old mystery and a lot of intrigue and adventure. Now, did a lot of this come, uh, uh, I mean, how, kind of piece together how you came up with this? Yeah. So I came up with the idea on a trip to Venice. Okay. I actually came up with the idea when I originally saw a different Tintoretto painting, another one that is really big uh, called the Crucifixion in a different museum. It's not quite as big as this one, but it's still huge by any stretch of the imagination. And that particular painting probably has about, I don't know, maybe 75 people in it. And each one of these people. So something about Tintoretto that I love is that his work just imbues and evokes so much visceral emotion. It's like every single thing I've ever seen by him. And by the way, I, I am I'm typically more into contemporary art, <laughs> um, not so much classical art. But uh, Tintoretto really, like, you look at his work, it just like blows me away every time I see it, especially in person. So I saw this one particular painting, and every single person in this painting looked like a completely different individual. So, you know, I'm aware that artists use models uh, for their work, but to that scale, do they really use that many? So then I started thinking, okay, who were these people? And then I started thinking, okay, maybe it was their souls that were captured in this particular painting. And then as I started to research Tintoretto and his work, I found Paradise, which was just so perfect for what I wanted. I mean, it was almost like the painting found me. Talk a little bit about, um, you know, as far as writing this specific book, um, how, how how did you kind of navigate the, the the process? The writing process or the publishing process? The writing process. Yeah. So I actually did write the first uh, draft of this book with a co-writer. Uh, her name is Tracy Stone, and she's actually a California native, lives up in uh, Sonoma. Oh, cool. um, and so we had also collaborated on some scripts. So we had that relationship, um, but it was my original script and my idea. So I, I took it from there. And my process is really, I'm a heavy outliner. So in the writing world, there's kind of this fun debate between what's called plotsers and pantsers or plotters, excuse me, plotters and pantsers. So plotters are people who outline everything. They plot it all out. Pantsers are people who write by the seat of, the seat of their pants and kind of just keep going. Um, maybe it's because I'm coming from a screenwriting background, but I'm a very, very heavy plotter. Mm. So especially with a story like this, um, I like to outline everything out of it. Now there was, I experienced something remarkable while doing this because again, it came from a script. And as I was writing the book, it evolved organically and grew into so much more than I had ever expected. It was really from the characters. Um, the characters just went on this journey, each individual character. And then from there, the book actually is now uh, the first of a three-part series. So I do have a three book deal with my publishers called Touchpoint Press. Okay. And the second book will be coming out in the fall of uh, 2022. Awesome. Um, we've got about a minute left, but real quick, uh, you know, earlier in the interview, um, I, was, uh, I was saying that, uh, you know, I've been looking at your media kit. One of the things I was looking at is um, this international collaboration. Can you tell us about that? 
Yeah, absolutely. So a lot of the book is about art. Um, you know, there's Renaissance art and one of the main characters is an emerging Venetian artist. So I connected in real life with Venetian artists and they are going to be doing um, their interpretations, paintings that are inspired by the book. So I'm extremely excited about that. You know, we'll be selling them in prints and things like that and promoting them. So it's really cool. That is incredible. Um, okay. How can people get the book? Absolutely. So it's available on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, and many other places. Uh, so if you go to Amazon, you can uh, search on The Prisoner of Paradise by Rob Sanborn, or you can also go to my website, which is robsanborn.com. That's S-A-M-B-O-R-N. Uh, and I'm also on pretty much every type of social media you can think of. Usually it's also Rob Sanborn as well. <laughs> you know, this would be a great gift uh, for the holidays for somebody too, right? Yes, absolutely. Especially people who love Italy, Venice, or love to travel, or they love sitting on their couch and want to get lost in a journey. <laughs> uh, this is a, uh, I, ho I hope my wife's not watching, but I'm going to get this book for her because I, or, I she, may. I hope she is watching. I, I may. <laughs> for the holidays, for the holidays. Oh, she, okay, so we won't spoil the surprise. <laughs> She's going to love it, though. She's, this is exactly like her whole forte. So I love um, hearing that. Rob, thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, great conversation. Please come back. Like you said, once the, the, the next uh, series is out, we'd love to talk to you again and, and promote that. I would absolutely love that. Thank you much, Austin. Thank you so much, Austin. This has been fantastic, and I would love to come back. Sounds good, my friend. Happy holidays. You too. Have All an right. awesome day. You Bye. too. I'm Austin Reed. You're watching Central Valley Talk. We're back with another guest coming up uh, here in the 11 o'clock hour in just a few. Stay with us.